Hello, I'm Philip Duncan from weatherwatch.co.nz with your global weather watch update. And we're taking a look at the more interesting and severe weather around planet Earth today. So let's get into it. We kick off with the animated rain radar. Actually, not a lot going on at the moment, although we have three tropical storms that are worth keeping an eye on. But no really big sort of rain events happening at the moment um, on any sort of degree, at least not in this part of the world. As we take a look now at the thunderstorm outlook for various parts of planet Earth at the moment, taking a look uh, first of all with North America, and we've got severe thunderstorm risks in Canada on the eastern side and along the southern states. The key down here at the bottom, yellow uh, indicates the thunderstorms are possible, orange thunderstorms are likely and in the red zone possibly severe so we are seeing severe thunderstorms around some of those tropical storms but really the main threat inland or uh, for populated areas eastern side of the united states and those southern states as well. As we move along planet Earth, let's take a look now at South America around Buenos Aires. There's a chance for some severe thunderstorms as we go through today, just a lower risk further south. And in the New Zealand and Australia areas, we're looking at a pretty quiet day at the moment, maybe a very isolated one down near Southland and a couple isolated ones in the southern parts of Australia. Otherwise, the thunderstorm risks, as usual, around the tropics. Uh, let's take a look at the current thunderstorms and no real change from the map we just saw. These are the actual ones that we just uh, screenshotted just before we recorded this video, showing thunderstorms in the usual areas around the South Pacific and Australia, Indonesia areas. And as we move towards the Americas, you can certainly see it is a lot busier in the Americas at the moment. Certainly, um, North America's got a fair amount at the moment. That cooler change coming through that we talked about yesterday will start to spark a few more thunderstorms as that moves in. And when we take a look at parts of the Middle East and Europe, also quite quiet at the moment, fairly dry airflow is coming through. Very hot though at the moment, we'll talk about that uh, in a moment. But we'll kick off with some rain now. This is the next two weeks of rainfall accumulation. It can be a little confusing to look at first of all. So the areas that we're most focused on are actually at the very top end of the key, purple to dark blue. Purple being around about 100 millimeters and the dark blue 300 millimeters. So this is over the next two weeks coming up and it shows you that a large portion of Japan, Korea, China, and going in across Indonesia, the Philippines especially, seeing some of those big rainfall totals. Not surprising, absolutely normal for this time of the year, but some big rainfall totals across that part of the world. Compare that though with Europe and it is a lot drier. Parts of England, parts of the UK, you know, only showing one to five millimeters over the next two weeks. So very dry conditions across the UK and also France, parts of Spain. But once you get further inland, Germany, um, it's looking a little bit wetter there where you've got sort of 50 to 100 millimetres and certainly dry around this part of the world. Very dry at the moment in Cairo, but it's quite hot. And we've got heavy rain falling around some parts of the uh, tropics here, going up around Papua New Guinea and Indonesia uh, in the Solomon Islands, some heavy rainfall there. But look at Australia, two weeks with no rain at all in this area. So very dry, again, pretty normal. That's why they've got a desert there, but uh, very dry conditions. And in the New Zealand area, pretty dry along eastern areas, but we've still got 50 to 100 millimeters coming along over the next couple of weeks for some of those western and northern areas. Let's get into the temperatures. This is the misery index. It shows basically the areas that are either feeling too hot or feeling too cold. And it is subjective, but the areas that we're looking at with the feels like temperature here in the yellow, that is in the 40 degree Celsius range. So very hot weather moving into parts of Mexico and Texas, very hot weather going up into the Midwest. Look at this, even getting into the feels like 40 degrees in parts of the Dakotas and getting into Canada as well, or at least getting close to Canada. So very, very hot weather for this time of the year in the US Midwest and a similar story around parts of Florida as well, very hot. The feels like temperature just getting up into the 40 degrees Celsius mark. Uh, other places that are hot at the moment across Asia, we're certainly seeing that around northern parts of India and getting over towards um, the uh, Emirates area. Dubai, um, daytime highs around about 40 degrees Celsius at the moment. Overnight lows around 32 or 33 degrees Celsius, so certainly experiencing their uh, hottest weather of the year at the moment. And we contrast that with Antarctica. It is much colder in Antarctica. Not, not that that's breaking news, but it is the feels like temperature down here right now, minus 80 
Celsius. So that's a 120 degree difference in the feels like temperatures around planet Earth at the moment. That is a lot. So we're certainly seeing uh, the extremes at the moment, which is normal, you know, peak of winter in the south and the peak of summer for the northern hemisphere. And let's stick with the southern part of the world around Antarctica. We switch to swells or wave heights now. Kind of interesting, we showed yesterday all the storms that are going around Antarctica, uh, which, you know, happen all year round, but they peak at this time of the year. The biggest waves at the moment are actually on the entire planet are just here southeast of New Zealand, quite a distance, about 3,000 kilometers southeast of New Zealand, completely out in the Southern Ocean and hugging the ice shelf. If you're wondering, wondering why these waves aren't coming into the coastline of Antarctica, it's because the coastline's frozen and that's all the ice sheet going around it. So the waves obviously don't come, come in over that. So pretty stormy. By the way, the rest of the waves around here are mostly between sort of four to eight meters and they're over 10 meters in that area there. Let's take a look at the northern hemisphere and it is much quieter despite the fact we've got one, two, three tropical storms at the moment. But the wave heights there are only around about you know, seven or eight meters at this stage. They may get much higher, especially as some of them deepen a little bit further. But overall, it's pretty calm on this map showing the North Atlantic and a large portion of the Northern Hemisphere Pacific Ocean showing fairly calm conditions. Uh, we've got a hurricane at the moment. This is continuing to push through, Hurricane Linda. It is heading towards Hawaii, but at this stage, it's not looking to be a significant problem because it's likely to be tracking further to the north. As this map here from the National Hurricane Center shows, the winds over the coming days as Linda tracks to the north of Hawaii, so it'll help bring in some decent surfing swells, but it's not likely to do a lot more, not at this stage. Worth keeping an eye on though, it's a little bit like how we have to deal with storms in New Zealand. We're a very small country and the storms are quite large. They either miss us or they make a direct hit for us and they can be a little bit hard to lock in, but this one looks to be moving to the north. And before I finish today, something a little bit different, ending on earthquakes. There was a large earthquake this morning, or actually overnight, I should say, last night around Vanuatu in the northern area, 6.9 according to the USGS, about 90 kilometers deep though, so nice and deep, that helps to minimize any of the damage. And there was certainly a few earthquakes around the Pacific Ring which is fairly normal. That is all from me. Thank you so much for joining us. For those of us, uh, or those of you who are in New Zealand, please do visit our website, weatherwatch.co.nz. And for our international viewers, please use our business partners at IBM by going to weather.com. Nice and easy. We'll see you again tomorrow with our next Global Weather Watch update.